All right, let's look at some of the stuff they said about our, my church. Lee Lee King recommends the Waters Baptist Church. I adore the preacher in the way he delivers the sermon. He is totally a man of God, and in my opinion, very sweet people in his church wish I would live closer. Carl King recommends Stillwater Baptist Church, a New Testament church where the world is still preached without apologies. Dan Austin Kelso recommends Stillwater Baptist Church in Memphis. Five stars. All right. The Ladies Luncheon. Michael Ridgens recommends Stillwater's Baptist Church of Memphis. Please listen to the great message from God here on Sunday. And when I was on Facebook, I gave it a five stars. I wrote, great people, great Bible study, great preaching, great teaching, and Sunday school, great place to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And a, another Facebook account, I wrote, great teaching and preaching of God's holy word and where we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on another account, I wrote, awesome church, great Bible teaching, great fellowship, great people, love the Lord Jesus Christ. And Gerald Rain Holmes recommends Stillwater's Baptist Church. I love the pastor, his family, but Don is a Bible preaching man of God. He preaches truth of holy boldness. The people of Stillwater's Baptist are some of the most loving, faithful people I know. So they got some good stuff to say about my church. Now I might have to do this one again. I've tried to do it earlier, but it didn't work for some reason. Um, it's having inward peace. It was done March 29th. Uh, let's listen to the sermon. It is a beautiful day here in Memphis. But don't worry. It I'm was. Sure rain is just around the corner. <laughs> it did rain today. We're glad to have you with us today. And pray that the Lord will bless you and help you. We're going to be looking at a concept that uh, that just isn't hardly seen in this hour. That is a biblical concept of having inward peace. Our text is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 and 39. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Think on the good things, the good things of Jesus and God in the Bible. Yeah. Good things. Jesus is the Prince of Peace.
Now, as we look at this, this church started, uh, is the first church in Europe, Europe started by Paul uh, as a result of uh, Lydia coming to Christ and, and the Philippian jailer. And uh, there are not very many Jews in this city, so it's predominant Gentiles, Romans. So it wasn't the best case scenario for a Jew, and especially not a Christian Jew. But anyway, this is where it starts from. And in this text, Paul is going to offer us four commandments to help us four. to know how to have inward peace. So let's begin here in verse number four. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Paul gives this commandment twice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Joy within until you have Jesus within. You need Jesus. Jesus. No Jesus, no joy. Don't misunderstand Paul to mean that we're talking about a, a feeling or an emotion. We're talking about a believing faith that in Christ Jesus all things are well. To trust Him wholly and fully. To know that whatever's in His hands is in solid position. It's sad that uh, that's not what we see today. Panic, pandemonium, fear, anger, grief. Uh, it's, it's just taking the world over. And that's not what we are to be as believers in Christ. Folks, if we're acting like the unsaved, then what difference does it make to be a Christian? So, really, look at this, good question. About, be uh, an be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be separated from the world. Be different. Christians should be different. Having a peace that uh, doesn't seem to match where you are. A confidence in Christ. The word rejoice here has, has that idea that I'm going to trust Jesus for anything and everything. And not in all things, God. trust Jesus. I have confidence He can handle it. Because He can. <laughs> if your peace or your hope is in anything besides Jesus, it's a false hope. Jesus is the only true hope. The stock market. Uh, your bank account. Um, Which I'm broke, so I don't, really don't trust in that stuff. Well, <coughs> politicians lie. You so can't it's trust in them. It won't last. Because see, everything changes. Especially Democrats. Including ourselves. You can't put faith in that. But see, Jesus is that immovable, unchangeable, eternal God. Hallelujah. He is. He was. And he shall ever be the same Lord Jesus Christ. His position is not up for voting. <laughs> Thank the I Lord. Mean, he is the appointed. He is the eternal Savior and Redeemer of the world. And he won't ever be any different than he is right now. When you deposit your faith in Jesus Christ, you know that's secure for all eternity. That's what it's talking about, rejoicing. To have that inward calmness. Have that ability to face the storm knowing that you and Jesus are going through it together. To know that whatever comes, He can handle it. Not, I'm not saying you can. I'm not about peace in ourselves. I'm talking about peace in Jesus. That's the kind of peace I'm talking about. It's like the old saying, uh, uh, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. My favorite. At least one of my favorites. It is well with my soul. And if you know the story behind that, you'd have to have peace to sing that song. But dear friend, I have that peace. I, I do believe the, the virus is real. I do believe it's serious. But whatever or not, whether or not God allows me to have it, He can handle it. He can handle all things. I'm going to still rejoice in the Lord. Jesus is a great physician. So he can handle our healing your and our sickness. Not determine your joy. Listen, there's an old song I love. Turn 
the last part of the 18th century, is called the solid rock. It said, when darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground, All other ground is sinking sand. sand. All Christ is a sure, guaranteed, or certain hope to put your trust into. And I pray you will. That's the first command. Now from that one, we come to another one. And that's verse number five. Number two. Uh, look if you will. Verse five. Philippians 4, Philip verse 4. Five. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now the word that's used here for moderation is not like we think. Uh, just limit yourself in, in, in amounts of things. It comes from a Greek word that means to be gentle. To be patient. To be kind in whatever you're doing. Uh, and with this coronavirus... Many people have lost all sense of calmness, peace. They're, they're, they have no peace. The world is, the world is uh, in trouble because they have no, no peace because they have no Jesus. And if you're not careful, you'll have to be the same way. No uh, Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. The only way to know peace is to know Jesus Christ. And if you don't There's know Jesus Christ, you don't, you will have no peace. I mean, he is ranting and raving and using bad Jesus, language. And, N-O, peace. I mean, it's like he's a personal K-N-O-G, Jesus. K-N-O, W, peace. And here he is. In this panic mode of the virus, he is mad and raving at these two employees because the product he which is had nothing to do with them pro- is no longer on the aisle that it once was. It's not in the same location. They had moved it somewhere, I don't know where. And he was furious over that. After the crazy and words and ugliness, people crazy. He goes his way and, and the God is good. Root beer is great. People are crazy. The younger of the two come over, comes over to register me and take care of me. And I see she's just at the point of crying. And I said, young lady, are you okay? And uh, sadly, she said, yes, sir, I, I'm okay. Said, said, everybody's coming in. It's, got, it's on the edge. She said, I've been cursed out three times today. I said, really? I said, what is it all about? Well, those three times it was about people couldn't buy but one but one uh, case of whatever they wanted. Uh, and they got furious about it. They got mad about it. And they went off on her and she said, they're just crazy. Share, people. Come on, share. Oh, isn't that sad? Has enough. Done them no wrong, and yet someone is taking out their frustration and their fear on someone else. At now, Dollar Tree, they got some limits of things as before. Believers, as children of God, we don't act that way. We don't behave that way. Why? Because we're looking to Jesus, and we have peace Jesus. inside of us, even in the midst of this problem. There's no need in it. It doesn't help anything anyway. Let's see. First For real. John chapter... Four, verse 17 and 18. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may be may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as Jesus is, as he is, so are we in this world. Whatever Jesus was, whatever Jesus meant to this world, that's what you and I are supposed to act like. We're supposed we're to be like Jesus. In the world. We are Jesus. Uh, uh, living uh, his life now. In verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out all fear. Because fear eliminates fear. He 
that feareth is not made perfect in Fear love. not. In other words, if, Trust if you God. don't really love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, then you're in fear. And fear has torment. And you can tell it. Be around someone who's who's in torment. That's somebody that's not trusting the Lord. That's someone who's not gotten peace from Christ. And our believers, if we're not careful, we can get the same position to the point. Uh, we need to trust Jesus. We need to act like Jesus. Our best day ought to be no different than our worst day. We're still the same because Christ didn't have good and bad days. He was the same always, and we need to be like Him. Same yesterday, Honor today, in our behavior. tomorrow, kind, and forever. Christ-like Jesus. how we deal with others. Then the third point, or the third commandment Paul brings out, is this, verse number 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, pray with thanksgiving, every day just to make let it the day. Be pray. Made known unto God. Now, be careful for nothing is the same way as saying don't worry about it. Don't worry. That's be happy and praise. Don't worry. Be happy now in Jesus. The Bible says true happiness is Jesus, Jesus is only Sermon can be Mount. known Therefore, through Jesus. I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. Now, take no thought is the same way as saying don't worry. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. God will provide it all. What you shall put on. Is not life more than meat? The body more than raiment? (sighs) Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father Storming he feedeth him. them. Now if God's taking care of them, then here's the question. Are ye not much better than they? Folks, if the birds can still sing <laughs> uh, without Jesus in the middle of this virus, shouldn't you and I that know Jesus still keep singing? He keeps me singing uh, as the day he goes by. Jesus keeps me singing. Years ago. We Sweet talked about Jesus. worry. He said, worry is nothing but a large bag filled with thoughts of what if or what am I going to do? That's repeated over and over and over in your mind. The battle says, of the mind. It dominates your thoughts. It controls you. It, Con- it's overtaken. Don't let it so you have control. Thoughts. That the Bible has control of your brain. Battle with the mind. Paul instructs us, instead of worry, Let pray. God rule your brain. Prayer yeah. is the opportunity that every believer has to sit down and talk to Jesus about it. It's a way that our soul talk to Jesus. can vent itself. Talk about it. Talk it to Jesus about it. Burdens, talk worries. about it Talking to, the Lord. to Jesus. Have you ever had a problem in your heart that bothered you so much you just... Felt you just got to have somebody to talk to. Dear friend, Jesus is that somebody. You can take it to Him, and He'll give you peace with it. See, I take everything to God in prayer. Whatever my need, whatever my burden is, I, I mean, God's in big things, but He's also in little things. If I need tires for my car, I pray about it. I mean, if He knows it all, then I want Him to be over all of it. In Matthew 6.33, right down a little bit farther, it says, Matthew Seek ye first 33. the kingdom of God, and all Seek his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of then God, and his righteousness. Seek God, he'll add the other. Then all these things I shall be sure added unto God you. Upon myself. But see, in prayer, prayer never informs God. God first. He knows everything from eternity. He knows it all. He understands he, it all. God is the big know-it-all because he does know it all. See, it never informs God and it never helps God. <laughs> Prayer is not for God's benefit. He's complete in and of himself. Prayer is nope. for our benefit. It's for you oh, and this me. This is our problem-solving thing. 
This is what we do when we have trouble and burdens. Because listen, although you may be a Christian, you still have problems. You still have burdens. You have concerns. You have needs. That's fine. Here's how yeah. God has to deal with. Paul commands us, pray. 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 Nothing's too big and nothing's too small. Because why? You're trusting Him for everything. So pray. Trust you know, when you pray, Him. Make sure trust Him. Only trust Him. Trust God Jesus. Dear friend, I tell Christ you, what, if you want to help your worrying situation, just spend time thanking God for all of His blessings. I mean the fact that you were born in the United States of America. The fact that you were born to your mom and dad. The fact that you, this, that, and that. Dear friend, you won't have time to worry if you'll just spend time thanking God for all of His goodness. Mm. It'll take you all day awesome. just to thank God's Him. Give Him praise and pray. That's how we for deal with our things words, that with He's our done problems. for you. Then the last command that He's going to give us is to think all these things. And He lists eight things here. I'm not going to read all these to you again. Uh, truth, honest, just, pure, uh, lovely, good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. Now, this verse recognizes the importance of what we think hmm. in relationship to our worry. Do you know that your mind is the playground of the devil? That's where he. That's why you need to fill it up with the Bible. Fill up your brain with the Bible, some, so uh, that Satan thoughts, can't some negative thoughts. Isn't that how he did? He get through. As he began to put questions in her mind about God, that's what he wants to do to you. He wants you to look at this mm. virus and throw your hands up in despair. Oh, I'm not going to be able to have Throw your hands I'm up not be able and to praise the Lord. Don't, don't really throw them in despair. Or, uh, hey. Because he's the only one that can. But you're not supposed to be fretting over those things because you're worried about it. Don't worry. You're just thinking over be and happy over now, and Jesus. What could have been wrong? Uh, it's nothing but fear and, and bad fear thoughts. Fear not. It's not producing anything For he, positive Jesus in your life. You don't have peace because have reverential you're fear in the all Lord, these things and not fear in the world. Over. You, and listen, if you quit thinking, or fear of the world, you'll quit worrying. I mean, in regards to negative things, don't don't think about them all. The be time. positive. Uh, he told don't us be negative. That you and I need to be thinking about. And when we're thinking about these good things, wonderful things, peaceful things, things that come from God, you won't be worrying because it all takes place in your mind. Now, all these things that he lists here, I, I thought about them and thought, I'm just not going to deal with them because time won't allow me to deal all with the different things. But it started saying things that I thought, well, that's hard for us to relate to in this day and time. Truth. The only place you're going to find that's in the Word of God. Amen. Honest. I hate to say this, and I don't mean to be ugly, but that pretty well lives, leaves out the politicians. Just. Well, that pretty well leaves out the court systems of our day and time who cannot see much of justice. Pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Dear friend, it's just... There's not much you can put your faith in that's going to last any at all. Uh, stop listening to the news. If I wanted to give you advice, it would help you. While you're thinking on all these good godly things, stop listening to the news all the time. That'll oppress anybody. Uh, a steady diet of the, of the media would, would really make anybody worry. Turn it off. I don't watch the news. And I'm very selective in anything I in social medias uh, because you can get yourself into a, a mental mess listening to all that. But stop talking about the coronavirus. I mean, it is. Be wise. Make good choices. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If that's your joy, if that's your source of security, your if that's the foundation of your life, keep your eyes on Jesus. Look full you know, in his wonderful Peter face. Peter didn't get out of the water. While he was looking at Jesus and his eyes fixed to him, he's on top of the water. World but when he stopped and began to look around in his circumstances and his waves and the wind, 
you begin to sink. Dear friend, if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, you can stay on top of the water. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be fretful. Listen to this old song. Oh, old school. soul, are you weary and troubled? Oh, soul, are the you the weary and troubled? There's light for the look at the Savior. Weary and, light and darkness you see. There's light in a Turn look at the your Savior. There's light in you look and say, close your eyes upon Jesus. And the Look full in his wonderful face, in the light and the things of this earth will go fully dim as the light of Jesus. his glory. Every day is not a good and day grace. My Amen. My circumstances. I may have sang that song wrong, but oops. Oh, well. I mean, I could, I could start telling you all the bad, all the wrong, all the, all the need. He told us eight things that you and I need to be thinking about. And when we're thinking about these good things, wonderful things, peaceful things, things that come from God, you won't be worrying because it all takes place in your mind. And all these things that he lists here, I, I thought about them and thought, I'm just not going to deal with them because time won't allow me to deal all with the different things. But it started saying things that I thought, well, that's hard for us to relate to in this day and time. Truth. Justice in the American way. Oh, wait. That's Superman, God. not God. I, Jesus is the real Superman. I hate to say this, and I don't mean to be ugly, but that pretty well lives, leaves out the politicians. Just. Well, that pretty well leaves out the court systems of our day and time who cannot see much of justice. Pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Dear friend, it's just... There's not much you can put your faith in that's going to last any at all. Uh, stop listening to the news. If I want to give you advice that would help you, while you're thinking on all these good godly things, stop listening to the news all the time. That'll oppress anybody. Uh, a steady diet of the, of the media would, would really make anybody worry. Help, I don't watch the news. And I'm very selective in anything I in social media uh, because you can get yourself into a, a mental mess. <coughs> Stop talking about the coronavirus. I mean, it is. Be wise. Make good choices. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If that's your joy, if that's your source of security, if that's, the, if that's the foundation of your life, keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, even when Peter did get out of the ship to walk on the water, while he was looking at Jesus and his eyes fixed to him, he's on top of the water. But when he stopped and began to look around at his circumstances and his waves and the wind, he began to sink. Dear friend, if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, you can stay on top of the water. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be fretful. Listen to this old song. Old soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his smiling face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. See, every day is a good day with Jesus. Every day, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day My before. Are not the best. I mean, I could... I can start telling you all the bad, all the wrong, all the all the needs in my life, all the problems, all the burdens. I could focus if I wanted to on those things, but then if I do, I'll worry. When I start focusing upon my future, it's out of this world. Because Christ 
has made that difference. <sighs> so, if you are putting your joy in Jesus alone, you got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart with Jesus to stay. If you've turned away from worry, you put your thoughts. The only place up there is for Jesus' thoughts, good thoughts, or positive thoughts. Then whatever comes your way. Jesus so is good times. It is well. Jesus has good I thoughts. So, friend, let me encourage you. If you're a believer in Christ, you can and should have inward peace. Because Christ is that peace. If you're not a believer, <laughs> you ought to be concerned. Because if I get the virus, and I may, I don't know, that's a, whether God allows that. If it were to take me and take my life, you know what will happen to me? Take my life, wow. leave me, Lord. Take my life, it is death, it's only leave a me, Lord. Make you my know. life useful yeah. to Thee. But if you die without Jesus. If you die without Jesus, you're going to go to hell. With or without the corona. And that's a sad scenario. For real. I just pray that you'll listen. And for so those Jesus believers out there, I, I really want to say, emphasize this. Your. Put your trust in Jesus. You trust Him. Peace. Only trust Him. Outward Do you know Jesus. Him today? Don't turn Him away. I Jesus. Oh, Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. We pray in the lovely and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. All right, that was having inward peace. Um, remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Jesus loves you. And uh, that was March 29th. I hope you enjoyed the sermons. And I hope you all have a great, wonderful day.